take us back to the beginning of your life. Where did life start out for you? Uh, I remember life starting out uh, being quite young on a family farm. We grew up with 10 acres and, um, yeah, I enjoyed being with my brothers. I've got three younger brothers. And so we spent all of the time playing in the dam, playing in the scrub. Uh, we had motorbikes and go-karts. Um, yeah, we even had a nice uh, border collie dog called Ted, who we inherited with the farm. Right. So when we got the farm, the dog came with it because they're moving into suburbia. And yeah, we got the dog and the go-kart and the motorbike that came inside the shed. So Bonus. we're quite happy with that. Yeah. So three boys, lots of adventures, I imagine. Yeah, lots of adventures. Yeah. Trying not to set the trees on fire. Um, How? We'll play with matches. Right. <laughs> we shouldn't be, but um, that's just a small story. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, well, we've got a beautiful photo here of the, the family on the tractor. Um, yep. So for our viewers uh, sitting there, so three brothers and your dad. Yep. Who are your brothers? Uh, I've got Dan, Matt and Pete. So, yeah, it's been a good quality time together. Did you all get along well as children? Uh, we did for being bought a whole family full of boys. We spent a lot of quality time together and played outside after we got home from school and spent most of the time outside and we had our chore days and our sports days on Saturdays and yeah, we liked doing a lot of sport. And what about your mum? What was she like having four boys? Uh, we talked to we had good quality time talking with her while we just came back from school and while she was making dinner, we'd have nice chats and stuff together. And dad helped me with homework and so did mum. Mum had to learn how to do the homework so that she, she could teach it to us. So, mm. yeah, it was a nice process. Yeah. What types of things did you do on the farm? Um, we were blessed enough to have a tennis court as kids and we enjoyed playing tennis and also basketball. And we also did some inline skating. I got my first pair of skates about 13. And that took me on a good adventure and had friends that also had skates as well. And we went down the um, underneath the pergola quite fast and we ended up hitting a jump at the end of the pergola and would get like two car widths wide. So, um, yeah, we did lots of jumping. On your skates? On the skates. On a jump in yes. the back veranda. Yeah, so... The... Talk us through how that happened. <laughs> we... We had a chair and on top of the chair we had a board and then we had another board on top of that which was um, uh, quite flexy. So you hit the jump at a lot, big speed and you get lots of air and it was like a suspension jump. And so we had to see how far we could jump and also see how high we could jump and we measured it by how many chairs that we could jump higher. So, um, yeah. That was a good challenge. It yeah. sounds really safe. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't too safe, but we didn't have any big accidents, so that was okay. You did what okay. I was going to ask. Yeah, yeah. Were, there, were there any, uh, there's got to be some stories of some, some something along the line. Yeah. Um, yeah, I had a, quite a few experiences with uh, jumps and going down hills quite, quite fast. Um, but, yeah, I didn't crash, so that was good. Okay. But, um. Yeah, one of the times I went down a very steep hill, my brother Dan was on his bike and then I held onto the back of the bike seat to try and slow down, but then his bike got the speed wobble, so I had to let go and keep going down the hill. Wow. We were probably going down the hill at about 70 k's now. <laughs> yeah. How did you stop at the bottom? Uh, you wait till the hill flattens out. That's how you stop. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, right. just no choice. Just hold no on. Choice. Just hold on, keep going. Yeah, wow. Or put your arms out to try and slow down with the wind resistance. That's another way to do it. Does that really work? It does. Yeah, okay. It definitely does. Well, he's, he's here today. I well, <laughs> yes, yes. I'm, I'm I, also had a, I also made a sat cart out of some uh, roller blade chassis is what I put onto a little board. And you sit on the board and you go down the hills and you ski with your skates on the front. And so you can go down there and go off track as well as on the roads and whatnot. So. What does that mean? You made a board with... Uh, so the board was about yay wide yeah. and about yay deep. Mm -hmm. And so you just sit on it and then you hold onto the board oh. and you use roll blade wheels at the front to steer. And oh. that's a nice way of doing like a luge kind of thing. Wow. Down the hill. So these really are your own teeth? 
Yes, they are. <laughs> wow. So you unscathed through all of that. <laughs> yeah. Sounds, sounds like a fantastic um, childhood there, growing up. Yeah. Brothers, adventures, lots of outdoors, lots yeah. of adrenaline. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely lots of adrenaline. So there was a motorbike as well? That yeah, the motorbike. Heard? Yeah. Um, we had a Yamaha 80, which had a power band. And so that just gives you a good acceleration. Um, and that was a good motorbike for starting off and we also had a, a chip starter motorbike which not many people would know what that is mm. you pretty yeah. much get a wedge and then you wedge it into part of the motor and then you push the motorbike and then once it's going at a bit of a speed you kick out the chip with your foot and then it starts oh. and that's how you get the motorbike to start it was a very old school motorbike it had a it, it was yeah it, it was on constant acceleration and the only way to stop it was to put the brake on. So it had no accelerator, it just had a brake. And so if you had no brake on, then you just got top speed. And then you use the brake to slow down. So it was really interesting going around corners and stuff as well. And yeah, it was good fun. Mm -hmm. And the go-kart, which we got with the house, that was good, good fun. We had a few motorbike and go-kart races. And yeah, the go-kart... Um, had an accelerator, but it had no brakes, so you had to allow to stop if you, yeah, if you're going too fast, you had to think in advance. Mm. Good fun. Look at that, a motorbike with a brake, but no acceleration, and a go-kart, <laughs> the exact opposite. That's right. Wow. This sounds like a wonderful time that you had growing up. It yeah. really does. Yeah, so your world was really your, your brothers and your family at, yeah. at, for much of your growing up years. Yeah. We also had friends that were mechanics as well. Oh, yeah. Like my dad didn't know too much about the motorbikes and the go-karts, but um, he said, I can help you with other things, but not, not that, which was fine. So we showed a bit of interest in the motorbikes and go-karts. So he's like, oh, and yeah, we kept on going with it. Mm. So that was good. Now with 10 acres, did you have a dam <clears throat> or a creek yeah. or anything like that? So we had a front dam and we had a back dam. Uh, the front dam was safe enough to swim in, but the back dam was too deep, so... We just hung around in the front dam for swimming and played with the windsurfer board on the dam and had a few things that we played with. And we had an island in the middle of the dam. So, yeah, you'd, you'd walk across to the island. And then if you wanted to, we also had a, a swinging rope so we could swing into the front dam as well. But yeah, or just jump off. Yeah. Yeah. Were but, there fish or yabbies or anything like that in there? We actually put a few fish into the dam, and mm -hmm. so at the end we put a net the whole way across the dam to collect them all, and the yabbies in the dam, I think we introduced them, but I think that was a bad idea, because they made holes in the um, the clay, so it didn't hold the water as much, and the dam mm -hmm. kept leaking after it went on. Okay. But um, yeah, we enjoyed catching yabbies, and we also ate them as well, so... How do you eat a yabby? How, you what's, what's boil them that? with water <laughs> until they scream, and then they turn bright red, and then... I'm oh, sorry, do they literally scream? I've they literally scream, before. yeah. It's not a nice process if you want to hear them scream. Mm -hmm. But um, they turn bright red, and then they're ready to eat. Yeah. They taste like lobster, I reckon. Okay. Not quite as good as lobster. They taste a little bit more... A bit more like mud. <laughs> but... Not bad from your own backyard. Though. That's right. Not bad from your back, own backyard. Yeah, a bit hard to get lobster happen. So you get the ones that we had at home were probably about yay big. Yeah. And so there's small ones and large ones, but we just cooked up the large ones. Yeah. Thank you for watching this short clip of Life Burst. You can like, subscribe or follow for more or head to rawcut.com.au.